God is good. And all the time, it is good. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, this is a day I so much love. This great solemnity of Christ the King that brings to an end the church's liturgical year. There in Nigeria, where, where I come from, we combine the solemnity of the, I mean, uh, Christ the King with the solemnity of the sacred, of the Corpus Christi. We celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi the day it should be celebrated, but we don't do procession that day. The procession is transferred to the solemnity of Christ the King. And on a day like this, it is, it is joy, singing, dancing, playing of instruments with the Lord Jesus and the Holy Eucharist, going from street to street, from road to road, making noise and shouting to the whole world that Jesus is our King. On a day like this, people dance and dance and dance and dance themselves to stupor. <laughs> And it's all joy. And at the end of the dancing and singing and the processions, we all gather to eat and drink and to celebrate Jesus, the King. And so I miss it. <laughs> my dear brothers and my dear sisters, but it's not just about the dancing and the eating. It's about what we celebrate and who we celebrate on this solemnity. Pope Pius XI, in 1925, instituted this great solemnity, the solemnity of all solemnities, the feast of all feasts. And on that, the day he instituted this uh, solemnity, he proclaimed something that will be for us today a theme, Pax Christi in Regno, Christi. The peace of Christ is the kingdom of Christ or the reign of Christ. That means to have the peace of Christ in your heart and in your life and in your soul, you must allow Christ to reign, to reign in your life. We must allow Christ to reign in our lives. The kingdom of God, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is, so to speak, at the heart of the teaching and preaching of Jesus Christ while on earth. That is why in the, in the Gospels, the phrase kingdom of God is used about 122 times, but Jesus used the phrase himself for about 90 times. Just to let us understand how important this kingdom is to him. And every day we pray, thy kingdom come. Let us go to the readings of today. Pilate asked Jesus in the gospel, are you the king of the Jews? And you know how what he replied, do you say this of your own? And then again at the end of the gospel of today, Pilate asked again, then you are a king? And Jesus' answer was simple, you say I am a king. That means he is a king. When he says, for this I was born, it implies I was born to be a king. And for this I came into the world. I was born to be a king in the world and to testify to the truth. So it's not in doubt if Jesus is a king. But some people will ask, where is his kingdom located? Because he says, in the response he gave to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Does it mean the kingdom of God is only in heaven? No. The words of Jesus does not imply that his kingdom is only in heaven. Because let's go to the first reading. The prophet Daniel was very simple. In his vision he said, I saw one like the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. And then he came, went on and went on and said, The one like the Son of Man received dominion, 
glory, kingship, all peoples, all nations, all languages will serve him. And his dominion is an everlasting dominion. All peoples, all languages, all nations. So his kingdom is not just in heaven. His kingdom reigns in all nations, in all languages, everywhere in, on earth. He is king. And then let's go to the second reading too, so that we're able to understand this more. Jesus Christ is the, fet is the faithful witness, another vision from the book of Revelation. The firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus is not just the ruler, the king. He's the ruler, the king of the kings of the earth. So his kingdom is not just of heaven. His kingdom is of heaven on earth. That is why Jesus Christ, when the announcement of his birth was given by angel Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, verse 32, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, you are favored. You're going to be a mother. You're going to conceive and have a child. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He's going to rule over Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And so his kingdom will have no end. He's going to be a king, and his kingdom will have no end. And it didn't just end there. In Luke chapter 19, while Jesus was about entering Jerusalem, he told the apostles, go get me that animal I'm going to stay, uh, mean stay on to enter Jerusalem. And when the owner of that asks you, what are you doing? Why are you untying this animal? Tell the owner of the animal that the master wants it. The master needs it, not one. The master needs it. The apostles did not say, our master needs it. The apostles said, the, the master, that is, the master of the owner of the animal, the master of the animal, the master of everything he needs it. And then untie it and bring it to me. And then Jesus sat on the animal. And people were spreading their clothes and the rest of them while he walked on into Jerusalem. And what we are there doing, they we are singing, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. He is a king. And it doesn't just end there. After the death of Jesus Christ, in John chapter 19, verse 19, there was something put up above his head on the cross. And the inscription is simple. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. Yes. He's the king of the Jews, but not just the king of the Jews, but the king of Israel. But not just the king of Israel, the king of righteousness. But not just the king of righteousness, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's the king of your life and the king of my life. They called him the king of the Jews. But he's not just the king of the Jews, he's our king. And so, Jesus' kingdom is located the in the whole universe. He is king of heaven and earth. And I want us to believe it, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And so how does his kingdom operate? We go back to the gospel, and then we hear Jesus say, talk, my kingdom does not belong, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. The oppression of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom that Jesus Christ is the king of, is not operated according to the principles of the kings of this world and kingdoms of this world. Because the kingdoms and the kings of this world are always in fear of losing their kingdom. And so they're always fighting. And so Jesus stressed it. The kingdoms and the kings of this world fight to keep their kingdom. But I don't fight. The working principle of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is not fighting or fear. It's love. Because 
the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is not under any threat because nothing can happen to the kingdom of God. Even those who believed and those who did not believe. Whether people believe in his kingdom or believe in him or not, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is not under any threat. Because we have gone through the Bible and we've seen that the prophecy is that the kingdom will be forever. And so no matter what happens to the church, no matter what the church goes through, the church of Jesus Christ, nothing will happen to it because the head of the church, Jesus Christ, is the king that rules forever. That's the joy of this celebration, my dear friends in Christ. And so, while the kings and the kingdoms of this world fight, you know there was a time Rome was, was, was the superpower in the world. So where is Rome at the moment? So kingdoms will fizzle away, but the kingdom of, kingdom of Jesus Christ, nothing will happen to it. So the working principle of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is love. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, do you and I belong to this kingdom? If we believe or think we belong to this kingdom, we should ask ourselves a very important question. What motivates, motivates my life? What drives my life? Is it the love that Jesus Christ uses to keep his kingdom intact? Do I still have anger, animosity in my heart? Do I fight at different places where I find myself fighting in the place of my work, fighting in my homes, misunderstandings, and the rest of them? The working principle of the life of every child of this kingdom should be love, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It is very, very important. And when the working principle is love, it will be true that Jesus reigns in your life and in my life. Because Jesus will reign wherever I find my, myself. Remember the proclamation of Pope Pius in 9-11 that I mentioned. The peace of Christ can only come into my heart and into your heart when I allow Jesus Christ to reign in my life. When I, I allow his kingdom to reign in my life. That's the only time I can have the peace of Christ. I'll always be joyful. And so we should allow Jesus to reign in our family. Coming together to pray. Sharing love, showing love. We should allow Jesus Christ to reign in our place of work. We should allow Jesus Christ to reign in my bedroom, even in my bedroom. Even in the darkest of chambers, even in the secret chamber, Jesus should reign there. Is Jesus truly reigning when people are not there? Is Jesus still alive and reigning in the secret of my room? Or when people do not see me? That's the only time we can have peace of mind, my dear friends in Christ. Jesus should reign in my home, even in my smartphone. Jesus should reign in my smartphone. Jesus should reign in my thoughts, in my head, in my heart. Jesus should reign in my words when I speak. It should be words of love. We should make Jesus real. Because we all claim to be children of this kingdom. It's not just about singing and dancing as we do in Nigeria. After that, what next? What examples do I give as a child of this kingdom? What do people learn from me as a child of this kingdom? Because I always claim and I accept him. I've accepted him. Today again, we are going to receive him in the Holy Eucharist. That same Jesus, who is the king of heaven and earth, whom David saw in a vision, whom Daniel, I mean, whom Daniel saw in a vision, whom John saw in a vision in the book of Revelation, that same Jesus is he who we receive on the altar. When he gets into me, do I allow him to have his way in my life, penetrate there and live there? There are some exhibits, I mean, some exhibition of uh, the miracles, the Eucharistic miracles, that right there. After Mass, we're going to be invited to go and see what Jesus continues to do. That miracle continues to happen every day, and it is going to happen again today at this Mass. All I need is to open my life and my heart and my soul and allow him to live there and have his way in my life. That I be light, that I radiate 
this kingdom of his wherever I find myself. My dear friends in Christ, we are blessed to have Jesus as our king. So many do not celebrate what we celebrate today. So many do not have the opportunity that we have today. We are blessed to have this opportunity of having Jesus Christ as our king. So many have rejected him. So many are not interested. So many have said there is no God. But the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. But we believe that Jesus Christ is God. And so today is a day to praise him and to open our hearts to him to dwell and to reign and to let him reign everywhere that we find ourselves, wherever it is, whether there is somebody there or there is nobody there. He is the master. He called himself the master. So allow him to be master in your children. Allow him to be master. Teach your children about Jesus Christ. Bring them up in the fear of this Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Allow Jesus to be master in your wife and in your husband. Not when your husband is very interested in things of God, you become an obstacle, or your wife, you become an obstacle. Let Jesus be the master of whatever happens about your job. Hand it over to him. Do what you can and leave everything in his hands and ask him to have his way. Allow Jesus to be master of your health. Even when you are sick and the doctor said you're going to die, Whatever happens, hand your life over to him. The doctors have said what they want to say, but Jesus has the final say. If he says you will live, you will live. If he says you will die, you will die. And if you die, you go back to him. Allow him to be the master of whatever happens in your life, my dear friends in Christ. I say it at the beginning, I say again. I am so happy at this celebration. And the only thing I can say is to thank God for this wonderful blessing. And I say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Rejoice, who come to their Father, through Jesus' his Son. And give him the glory, great things he has done. I wish you could sing it with me. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. He's the king. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. We are blessed. Oh, come. To the Father, through Jesus, his Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Happy solemnity of Christ the King to you all.